بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين على آله وصحبته أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to our reading of the 40 hadith of Sayyidina Imam al-Nawawi رحمه الله تعالى نفعنا الله تعالى بعلمه في دارين أمي وأنه قال الحديث الثامن وعنه قال عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه هريرة is ممنوع من الصرف meaning it's a type of noun أعلم بالتأنيث which doesn't accept كسرة so you don't say عن أبي هريرة like the word عائشة like the word حمزة and so on and so forth like طلحة so عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول and you see something very important here he says عن أبي هريرة عبد الرحمن ابن سخر عبد الرحمن ابن سخر is what's called عطف البيان who's أبو هريرة عبد الرحمن ابن سخر and there is a number of opinions about his actual name some said عبد الشمس there's other names given to him why would Sayyiduna Imam an Nawawi write it in this way? An Abi Hurayrata Abdir Rahman ibn Sakhr. To show you that according to him, that's the strongest opinion. That's his name. That's the name of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Qala Samiatu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa salama yaqul. This hadith that we're about to study is the foundation of Sharia. The foundation of fiqh and really one of the guiding principles of usul al fiqh. The Prophet said, Whatever I have prohibited for you, you must abandon it. It brings about one of the most important axioms in Islamic law. Al aslu fi an nahi al ijtinab aw al tark that our foundational relationship when we've been commanded to stay away from something is to leave it. Ijtinab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about alcohol and gambling and like magic and sorcery. You must abandon it. Sorcery, uh, tarot cards, the zodiac. Now a lot of Brothers and sisters getting caught up in that stuff. So this, the beginning of this hadith lays out one of the important principles. For those of us who have embraced Islam, we have to embrace Islam with the attitude of beginning to peel away the forbidden from our lives. I didn't say throw it away. We talk about that in the hikam, in the second hikam in our class here at Swiss, but to peel it away and to slowly eradicate it from our lives, to evict the haram from our life. If you come back to Allah and made Tawbah and you were born Muslim, to begin to evict the forbidden from your life. So the Prophet says, Ma, yani, ma means whatever. Ma means am. Ma nahaytukum anhu fajatanibu. Whatever I have prohibited for you, fa, and this fa means bisura, immediately. Fudge taniabu doesn't mean don't be wise, don't use hikmah, of course, but at least have the intention that you're going to be on this trajectory of removing the forbidden. I'm on this trajectory as a new Muslim. When I became Muslim, I began to realize there are certain things I have to slowly peel away from my life, like using marijuana, having girlfriends, you know, partying, clubbing, living foul, because I knew that if I wanted to be Muslim. I knew that I had to do it, alhamdulillah, sincerely and correctly. Allah says, enter to Islam completely and don't follow the footsteps of shay shaitan. So the first part of this hadith is the crux of the deen after tawheed, after iman. And that's why Imam Sayyidina Imam and nawawi puts it here. Because now after talking about certain hadith in the beginning, although we know that Amr ibn Ma'ad, Abu Amr ibn Salah, he's the one actually to put this hadith here. We know up to hadith 23, it's Abu Amr ibn Salah. That's why he put this hadith here, and Imam An Nawi peer reviewed it and agreed, and so did Sayyidina Imam Hafat ibn Rajab al Hanbali, because three writers actually wrote this text. 
they agreed to this, it's been peer reviewed. Because after you fix the aqidah, then it's time to work on actions. What's the first basic foundational principle? As he says in his introduction, the foundations of Islam, the kulliyat of Islam, what he calls in Riyadh Salihin al wadihat things that are very clear and easy for us to do. What I have prohibited for you, you must avoid. This implies two things. Number one is ijtinab, which is a wajib for us to stay away from the haram. How do we know that something's haram? The Quran or Sunnah says it. Hurimat alaykum, for example. Allah says, prohibited for you is this. Number two, it's linked to a punishment in the hereafter, like hell or a punishment in the grave. So we understand that that's forbidden because the Sharia will command us to avoid those things, which by avoiding them, there's maslaha, there's benefit for us in this life and the next. Number three, they're associated with a had punishment, right? The, the serious punishments for serious crimes like adultery and theft and so on and so forth. Number four, through ijma, a consensus of the scholars. Number five, if you follow a madhab or a teacher, taqlid of that madhab or that teacher. And then number six, uh, is what's called ta'zirat in the running of an Islamic state. And we'll talk about that potentially in the future. So this is ijtinab, which we have to do. The second type of ijtinab is recommended, and that's the makruhat. مَا لَا يُثَابُ عَلَى فَعْلِهِ وَلَا يُعَاقَبُ عَلَى تَرْكِهِ بِعَلَمْ إِسْتِمْرَارِهِ It's important to say that. That the makruh are those things that are disliked. If we do them consistently without a reason, they could lead us to the forbidden. So that is from the bab al wara right? Or the bab of being, uh, uh, not wara but of, of being like more, more present religiously, more adherent religiously. And the third type of ishtinab, actually there's three, is to avoid the permissible. And that's from bab al wara to avoid the permissible so that I can up my, my, my angelic state, if you will, right? That I can up my iman, excuse me, that's what I'm looking for. I can up my iman. My, my, and as one of my teachers, I said angelic, is that the angels don't commit sins. So I would say, ismatum kasayidin mara'ika. The angels and the, and the prophets are the same. So I get closer to that state by avoiding sin. That's what I meant by that. So the third is to avoid the permissible, so that I increase my level of taqwa and increase my level of wara, al haya and consciousness. This is the opposite of where society is today. Now people, they ask for fatwas that will allow them to do the forbidden. In the earlier times, what made those Muslims different, mashallah, is that wasn't the case. They were looking for fatwas that would protect them from falling into dangerous components of the permissible. Subhanallah. Of course, we have to be careful with that because لا تحرم ما أحل الله لكم, right? أحل الله لك لا تحرم ما أحل الله لك. Don't make forbidden what Allah has made permissible. But as someone wants to individually, without harming themselves and their family and those around them, avoid certain components of the permissible in order to discipline themselves to draw nearer to Allah. There's nothing wrong with that. So he said, مَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَجَتَنِبُوا إِشْتِنَابْ عَلَى ثَلَاثَةِ مَرَاتِبْ أو أربعة يعني. Or ثلاثة. Number one is three levels of ishtinab, of avoidance. I have to. It's recommended. It's permissible for me to. مَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَجَتَنِبُوا So we'll stop here. This is the first part of the hadith. And this first axiom, I need you to memorize it. النَّهِي مَبْنِي عَلَى تَرْكِ Annahi, excuse me, yufidu at-tark. Annahi, yufidu al-ijtinab. Wa annahi, mabniyun ala tahrim. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yuwafiqna wa iyaakum, barakallahu feekum, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala sayyidina Muhammad, assalamu alaikum, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.